Let's talk about the audio engine enabled live, proper gain staging and headroom, because these matters are, they are understood by some, but also this is something that I see a lot of misunderstanding around. And a lot of people are confused with these topics. So I just want to clear these facts to you so you know how to use your levels and gain. It is actually pretty simple after all. So I'm going to start with this very basic beat. So you see that my tracks are green and the master is green. And it's not distorting. I do get asked, can I run my tracks red in the song? And the shortest answer I can give you, which does take a bit of explanation, but the shortest answer for this is yes, your tracks can be as loud and red as you want, as long as the master is green. And I can prove this very easily to you. Each track, I want to add this utility plugin that will add, add 35 dB of gain. So I should go fairly red with the tracks. I'm not saying this is good practice, but let me take the master down now. So here the master is not distorting. I could even add a bit more gain. I don't have to, but just let's see. Let's go for, I don't know, let's go for 50 dB more per track. So I'll just copy this utility to each track. Let's get the master down. So as you can see, the tracks are going fiery red. It's not, there, there, it's not even flickering, it's that it stays in the red, but master is green, so this has to do with the fact that Ableton Live has a 32-bit audio engine, which means, in a nutshell, that the headroom for the tracks here is super high. That's all you need to understand. But the master headroom technically isn't really that high, or, I mean, when you run the master red, It'll, it'll start clipping. And the reason for this is when you, when the signal gets converted from this digital audio to analog audio by your audio interface, all audio interfaces mostly these days are 24-bit. There is no such thing as 32-bit audio interface. So the extra headroom that 32 bits gives you gets chopped off by your audio interface. So it will distort. So in a nutshell, keep your master green and the track level kind of doesn't matter. But another thing is the levels between plugins. For example, let's take this baseline. Okay, it's all nice and clean. So we have plugins that react to input levels. For example, this saturator plugin I don't even know what's happening. I'm not even hearing anything. See, it just, it just probably just flips out because it cannot handle this input level. So what am I saying is, I did say that master level does count, keep it in the green and track levels can go red if you need to, I'm not saying it's good practice, but this levels between plugins. Now this is an entirely different matter because as you can see, I'm running this so massively loud to this plugin that it just, it just roasts the sound and it cannot handle it. Some plugins don't necessarily react to that. Let's try this with an EQ. Let me go for EQ eight. Let's see how it handles this. So, this EQ doesn't care, but saturator obviously just flips out. So <clears throat> there are plugins that react to input levels, such as saturators and compressors and dynamic tools, and especially analog model plugins, some faithful analog emulations. For example, I do use a lot of universal audio stuff, and most of it is analog emulated. So it means that it even, I'm not even, 
yeah even if it's it's an eq but it totally roasts the sound because analog emulated plugins often faithfully emulate the input stage so for analog hardware devices their gain staging is different in a nutshell you cannot really just carelessly run signal into analog devices as loud as you can into this digital eq here this this digital eq may not even care about the level but analog does so for leveling i use this plugin by hornet called vu meter and i use it to level the sound down to minus 18 or up if it's really quiet so a reference level is set to minus 18 and i play the signal and i'll let this plugin level the sound What does this mean? It means that it levels the sound sound down to minus 18 dB, which is the ideal input level for analog plugins. So it means that then you will have enough headroom for pretty much any plugin in the world. And also, even if you do not have a leveling plugin, which is not absolutely necessary, I'm not even saying that it is, but if you want to take something away from this, take a look at the level here after it's been leveled down to roughly minus 18. So it's peaking somewhere over over the middle middle of this meter here. So an easy rule to remember is if you want to play safe with the levels going into plugins you could just use this utility plugin and Set the level so that it's, let's say, if you want to be safe, go for the middle, like the middle level, halfway. When you're, when the level is hovering around this part, I'm going to say it is okay for any plugin. So, recap. Tracks can go as red as you need to be. It's never a good practice. There's You don't gain anything from going red. That was number one. Number two, keep your master green, period. Don't go to red because it'll distort, it'll clip. The signal will then go over the headroom and you don't really get anything good out of that. Point number three, level between plugins is a different matter because some plugins react to input levels. Keep this level somewhere around halfway. It can go a little over that. So that's it really. There isn't really anything else to this. So keeping these three things in mind, you should be able to level your tracks and master correctly for great dynamics and clean, pure, punchy sound.